San Cristobal de las Casas, Mexico William Ruiz Sanchez spends his days grilling burgers and slathering fried hot dogs with pepperoni and cheese at his family's restaurant. Refrigerators and fire engine red tables provided by Coca-Cola feature the company's logo in exchange for exclusive sale of its drinks. Though members of the Ruiz family sometimes eat here, they more often grab dinner at Domino's or McDonald's. For midday snacks, they buy Doritos or Cheetos at Ojo, a convenience store chain so ubiquitous here that nutritionists and healthcare advocates mockingly refer to the city as San Cristobal de los Ojos. The family's experience in food service began in the 1960s, when Mr. Ruiz's grandmother sold tamales and home-cooked food made with produce from a nearby farm, those same ingredients sustained her boys with vegetable stews, beans, tortillas and eggs. Meat was a luxury. Since then, the Ruizes have become both consumers and participants in an extraordinary transformation of the country's food system, one that has saddled them and millions of other Mexicans with diet-related illnesses. It is a seismic shift that some nutritionists say has an underappreciated cause, free trade. Mexico began lifting tariffs and allowing more foreign investment in the 1980s, a transition to free trade given an exclamation point in 1994, when Mexico, the United States and Canada enacted the North American Free Trade Agreement. Opponents in Mexico warned that the country would lose its cultural and economic independence. But few critics predicted it would transform the Mexican diet and food ecosystem to increasingly mirror those of the United States. In 1980, 7% of Mexicans were obese, a figure that tripled to 20.3% by 2016, according to the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation at the University of Washington. Diabetes is now Mexico's top killer, claiming 80,000 lives a year the World Health Organization has reported. For many Mexicans, NAFTA promised to make real the fever dreams of joining the modern economy, said Timothy A. Wise, a trade expert at the Small Planet Institute and Tufts University. All former rural workers would be in new jobs in the burgeoning manufacturing industries of the post-NAFTA world. That just hasn't happened. The only way that Mexico became a first world country was in terms of diet. The phenomenon is not limited to Mexico. Research shows free trade is among the key factors that have accelerated the spread of low-nutrient, highly processed foods from the West, driving the obesity epidemic in China, India and other developing countries worldwide, according to the T.H. Chan School of Public Health at Harvard. But Jamie Sobluski Cooper, Mexico's deputy chief negotiator on the pact, said NAFTA didn't cause obesity. Instead, he said, it lowered food prices and reduced malnutrition. In 2012, 1.6% of Mexican children suffered from severe malnutrition, a sharp drop from 6.2% in 1988, according to government data. M.R. Sobluthuski said that Mexicans had long been enticed by American food, and that high tariffs used to make it expensive, not unavailable. The economy is now more stable, he said, and Mexicans are living longer which is partly why more people are dying from noncommunicable diseases like diabetes and heart disease.